Good afternoon everyone and here we go episode four of the people's portfolio guys okay now I've got to say after I basically just right now as I got set to to uh, record the video I couldn't help but notice on this little promotion screen here the little tip of the day from Tom at Football Index was something that put a big smile on my face and I had to go and check the main portfolio and we've had a nice rise on a wee sneaky tip that actually came from the people's portfolio initially and it wasn't one that I ended up backing into the portfolio but it is one that I spent I spent some money on in my own portfolio um, and is it going to come up? Is it going to come up? It was Gaston Pereiro anyway so it's nice to see that the team in FI perhaps they watched the videos too who knows okay so We've got some amazing suggestions coming to uh, come in this week from you guys. A lot of them were kind of last minute because I put a wee plea out because um, we didn't have that many names. You know, we're literally sitting with, I think, maybe Tonali and Bellain and that was it. Um, but we've got some great prospects to have a look at today. So again, we're going slideshow style. I've deposited £50 today. Um, £50 and a penny. Um, there's no there's no football and we're really gambling for it or anything like that. Um, so I deposited £50 and a penny and then I bought some Declan Rice and then we're going to do whatever we do with the remaining cash, okay? So, slideshow time, let's get into it. The first prospect we're going to look at is Sandro Tonali, which if you've been on the index for any length of time, is definitely someone who will have caught your attention. If you don't know who he is, that's probably why. You're like, who is this guy? Why is he so expensive? And then you maybe did some more digging beyond that, okay? The thing about Sandro Tonali, right, is see that picture? It looks like he's in like a prison yard somewhere and he's like eyeing up a rival gang. That's one thing I always think when I see this guy, he <laughs> looks a bit shifty. But as you can see, over the last six months, his price has been on a nice gradual increase. A lot of links to Liverpool, a lot of links to Serie A. Um, and that's pretty much what you see here. AC Milan, Juventus, Inter Milan, Liverpool. And there's a few articles there saying Tonali would rather stay in Italy while he's young or whatever. But it has a lot of parallels with Marco Verratti and... This is one of the things that I've spoken about recently, I forget who about exactly, but football, oh yeah, we're talking about World Cups, you know, you may not transfer after the World Cup, but maybe the season after, you know, <clears throat> whatever. Um, so, that you, you will constantly find these parallels in football of similar situations, and it's funny how often history repeats itself, okay? Now, with Verratti, he won Serie B with Pescara, or Pescara. and then moved, made his move to Paris Saint-Germain, never played any Serie A football, okay? Now, this guy... Uh, Tonali has got promoted with Brescia and he's been linked with massive transfers all over the place, you know, so with um, when you, you'll see these clubs, they have scouts that are dedicated to countries and to leagues and the fact that the last exciting could be the next Pirlo if you're a football manager person midfielder that came out of Serie B was Marco Verratti and in the career and the standing that he now has in the game it will reinforce some scouts' confidence that plucking an, an exciting-looking Italian midfielder out of Serie B is less of a risk than you may have previously thought. Okay, so some of these links can be quite credible. All comes down to money, really, at the end of the day. Uh, Whoscore.com and a lot of places didn't really have much details on the guy in terms of figures, passes, dribbles, tackles, all that kind of thing. But we can see he's been playing, he's 19, he's been in the Brescia team for two full seasons, and, you know, for a defensive midfielder, he's got a Credible enough record, scoring basically one in every ten games. And this season he's picked up a lot of yellow cards without getting sent off. So he's obviously a really defensive, tackling, defensive mid, moving the ball left to right, dictating play, dictating tempo. If we look at the national team, he's been in amongst the under-19s since the age of 17, by my best guess. If you're doing Euro qualifiers in 2018, they're probably doing them at the beginning of the year, like February, March, for the tournament. Euro 19s you see it there in the summer and just when you look at the guy's birthday with it being June he was probably 17 when he was making his under 19 debut so the guy's definitely recognised even by the Italian FA as a talent and somebody who should be playing at the highest level they possibly can see to that okay the next guy we've got is Hector Bain you will definitely know this guy He's been on a really surprising uh, increase over the last six months, um, especially when you drill into the last three months especially. Um, I've got to admit, I've not been following Arsenal terribly closely, but when um, I looked into Bayern, there uh, was only really just like, oh, I could be the captain next year. And then he's, he's quite... He's quite um, He's quite open in the he's quite open in the media with like issues like obviously this Alabama rape thing that you see here from May and he's obviously talked about veganism and a lot of things so he has a media presence of sort and if he was to recapture some of his form from the past and if Emery can get a 
get him to improve on previous performances and he's wearing the captain's armband and he is someone who could definitely capture you some dividends and get himself some more media attention he was very close to joining Barcelona before they went and bought Nelson Semedo um, and who's the other right back Sergio Roberto kind of plays there he's sometimes plays midfield you know so again you know in, in Barcelona as you've seen with De La Feu and you know guys like that Barcelona don't always buy the best player in the world they buy players who know Barcelona and know the system and that could be something worth thinking about um, I don't know why I've done that twice and then we look at stats he only played in the Premier League last year didn't play in the Champions League uh, pardon me the UEFA Cup I didn't play in anything else, just the league. And you can see 18 games, 5 assists. Shots per game is okay for a right back. Tackles is below. And dribbles is definitely below as well for somebody who you'd expect to be attacking the flank. Um, but could he do better next season? 100%. I believe he's had some injury issues and a few other bits and bobs, you know. But to only be playing 18 games in the league, he's definitely not been at his best. The next guy we come to is someone who we're very familiar with on the channel, and that is Jason Denier, okay? Now, I can't talk highly enough about this guy. I'm a big, big fan of him from his time at Celtic. Obviously, I personally got to watch him up close and personal for a season, and he has a real he has a real talented player, and uh, how his career kind of stalled, we'll come to in a second, but he's been on a nice increase, and if you're capturing him at that kind of 30 to mid-30 pence level, then you've definitely got yourself a bargain. You know, I was buying him in January this year in old money for 89 pence, so divide that by three is what you'd get him for today. Um, uh, and I had 300 of them at that point, which would equate to today 900 shares worth, you know, because I just ended up not having patience for it and the portfolio was limited, I moved them on. But it's somebody who I've followed and backed previously and I'm a big admirer of. In terms of news, is very dry. There's nothing there. You know, this is his most, his most recent five things on Google and the third thing is him signing for Leon last summer. So... You know, he's not really get much of a media presence. He's not getting linked to any transfers this summer. You know, whatever. And then when you drill into his stats, they're fairly credible. You know, 31 games. His first season in France, two goals. Tackles per game over that one mark, which is cool. Shots per game is, you know, it tells you he's getting up for some corners and getting in among some set pieces. Dribbles is quite low. Champions League, eight games in the Champions League, which, you know, is not anything to be sniffed by. And is always... Um, Tackling things are all a bit higher um, on the Champions League as well, which is really cool. Okay, and then this is the stuff that I'm kind of chatting about. We always spoke about this with uh, Neil Mopé. Um, somebody corrected me on my pronouncement of that. Um, and when you look at this guy's pedigree, right? So he's a Man City youth product. He's been at Man City since something like 15 or whatever. He's then went on loan at Celtic. Won the league, won the cup. Not the Scottish Chefe Cup. It's the, like, the Carabao Cup equivalent. He's then went on loan, we'll, we'll see his career here, yeah. He's then went on loan to Galatasaray. He's won the Turkish Cup. He's then went on loan to Sunderland under David Moyes. Done very poorly and uh, got relegated. And I think Man City were kind of teetering with the possibility of integrating him into the squad until that Sunderland spell. Because he never came back to Celtic because he went on pre-season with Man City. And then Peps looked at him and thought, right, we'll give you a season somewhere else, a bit more competitive in the Scottish League. They went to Turkey, won a cup, they brought him back. They weren't quite sure. Sent him in the Premier League to see how he would do there. And, you know, Sunderland were a sinking ship and you can see how far they've plummeted. It's not really any real gauge on denier. He's then went back to Turkey, he's had a good time there. And he's went and won the league. And then he's went to Lyon on a transfer. And I think it was something like 8 million euros or something like that that Man City got for him. And as you can see, in Scotland, he won Young Player of the Year, Team of the Year, Young Player of the Year for the club. You know, he was very well thought of. His centre-back partner at Celtic was none other than Jason Deny, um, than Virgil van Dijk. And if you ask any Celtic fan that remembers that season well, they will tell you that Denier was the better defender that year. You know, uh, Obviously, Denier was only with us for one year and van Dijk went on and progressed and got better. But when they were side-by-side, side, you know, van Dijk looked good, but what Celtic fans would tell you was Denier made van Dijk look good. And Denier was amazing. You know, we would have, uh, uh, anyone at Celtic would have bit your hand off to keep Jason Denier. He was so, so good. So I'm glad to see he's doing well. And next season could be a really big year for him. And as we know with Leon, they sell players to, and you can see he's getting capped for Belgium and everything as well. You know, it's Vincent Company, and uh, he kind of retires and phases out. And Boyata's going to Berlin. We'll see how that works out, you know. But you can start to see him getting capped more for Belgium. If he's getting capped more for Belgium, then you can quite easily imagine he's going to be on the radar of some big clubs. And especially having that link with Van Dijk, that's something you might want to keep in your back pocket in terms of information. This guy would come to is Tom Bayliss. Now, if you look at that big blue rectangle at the left-hand side, that means 
and that period he was not on the index okay so this, this is what you call an ipo he's been brought into the index as of for the looks of things here end of january something like that okay and this is his rise since then okay so he's uh, 60 pence to now he's a midfielder he's been in league one uh, doing well for Coventry and he's been linked with West Ham and Norwich and Aston Villa um, and yeah next James Madison people are saying and you know again just with the way youth English prospects have went the last couple of seasons teams are biting the bullet and buying these guys as cheap as they can as early as they can in the hope of not having to pay astronomical transfers further on down the road you know so this is a transfer that could certainly go through if it does go to um, the Premier League then is price you're going to see that rise of course but then it will then depend on appearances and performances how much is price will rise and how long it will stay at said level but for 20 years old guys you know he's had two full seasons in League One which is not a poor league um, in a lot of standards you know it's very competitive and very strong. Coventry are historically a really big club in, in, in the UK, you know, and I was a, a, I, I liked them when I was younger because I had Stracker as a manager and guys like Boateng and Huckerbay and I had a few good players, I quite liked them. So it's nice to see them. But anyway, uh, 27 games, 6 goals in his debut season from midfield and in this year, 38 games, 3 goals. And again, we don't have any more stats on him than this. And again, if you're a Coventry fan or you know much more about him, please feel free to share. But then also as well, he's been involved in the England Under-19 setup, you know, from League One, which is impressive, you know. The last player that kind of springs to mind that did something similar was Ethan Ampadu, getting into the Wales team when he was at Exeter, which I believe was League Two at the time before the Chelsea move. So again, there's a wee bit of um, history repeating itself to some extent again. The next guy, right, th this guy's been one of these uh, football index prodigies where everyone's going nuts about him because his YouTube clips are insane, okay? Now, the thing about Vincent Tilling or Vincent Phil, I don't know how to say it. I like the fact he's from Luxembourg, I don't know why, I think that's cool. Um, but it's West Brom and Norwich are potentially chasing him and they've been looking at him, otherwise it's just always oh, played for Luxembourg and whatever. Now, the league he was playing in, he, he plays for Mets, but he was on loan at a team called Pau, and that is their full name that you see there, P-A-U. He was the fourth, fourth top goal scorer in the league with 12, which from the top goal scorer is at 15, you know, it tells you he was one of the more prominent players in the division, certainly, and when you see some of the goals he's been banging in, they've been screamers, you know. But this is France's equivalent of the conference the champion of Chanat, you know, as they call it. Um, so the standard, I couldn't really possibly comment, to be honest with you. We all know about Riyad Mahrez and N'Golo Kante and these guys coming out of France League 2. But the championnat, I, I really couldn't comment on the standard. I've got no idea. Palco Darda is the next one. And again, when I seen this name, I thought, oh, I've heard of him. But no, it's his dad, Pal Darda, who I believe is Hungarian. This boy is German, okay, so you can connect the dots. He's also played for Hertha Berlin, the dad this, the, that is, and I think he managed him as well. Had his son there, stayed there, probably raised the family, and here we go. The son is stepping into the father's shoes, okay. Now, over the last six months, he's had a real big hop up from, let's just call it 20 pence up to 33, which is incredible. But, so I was thinking, right, okay, this guy must be playing, must be looking exciting. Um, this is just, you know, I didn't actually look at all this first time around. We'll come back to this in a second, okay. I was just like, there's no transfer links, whatever. I looked at it, I was like, okay, started once, came six times off the bench, there's nothing here, didn't even score. There's nothing here that really, why did somebody recommend this to me? It didn't make sense. And then I went and translated some of these articles and they're saying he's a really hot prospect, he's been playing in the lower division. And this year, he will be going out on loan again. Now, where he goes on loan is really going to dictate what he does on the index. If he goes to a qualifying competition and gets some game time, beautiful if he moves on loan to like France League 2 or you know somewhere where it's not a qualifying competition Tur uh, Portugal, Turkey, whatever um, then it's not really going to do much for you on the index but it's definitely somebody to keep an eye on at 33 pence it could be somebody that you know like a Robert Skov or a Vincent Till and these guys goes away to a lesser league makes a name for himself and then he comes back to Berlin even, even in the January cut the loan short perhaps then it could be somebody to watch out for okay and then the last guy we've got to come to is, again, stepping into father's shoes, Ianis Hadji, okay, born in Turkey from Romania, playing in Italy. Six-month graph is pretty attractive, hovering around 36 pence for a long period of time, and then basically doubled in price since the back end of March. Um, the reason for that, you might be wondering, is he's been linked to Arsenal, okay? Now, when I went to look for his stats, he didn't actually play for Fiorentina this season. He's been on loan at Vitorol Constanta. Okay, which is a Turkish Premier League team, uh, pardon me, Romanian. 
45 games, 16 goals, which is um, is a nice record to have. But when you bear in mind the guy is 98, 10 years younger than me, he's 21, and and playing for they're de- they're not a Stoya Bucharest, they're not even a Dinamo Bucharest, you know. Um, so a lower ranked team, they're not even a Cluj. Yeah, you know I mean it's a very very low ranked Romanian team to get 16 goals. I'd say he's done pretty well, but. Will he move to Arsenal? Who knows? If he does, will he play? Who knows? Um, I could see him staying at Fiorentina um, and filling like Chiesa's boots or something like this. And if Fiorentina have have history of you know Giovanni Simeone, Chiesa, Hadji. It's you know the, the three famous dads, isn't it? You know they've they've got history of that type of player and producing attractive attacking players in recent years. So he's definitely somebody to keep an eye on and see what his move is next. Okay, stay at Fiorentina, move to Arsenal, whatever it might be. Okay, so we need to make a decision for the people's portfolio today, guys. I deliberate, I deliberate, I deliberated, if I can say that. That's pretty heavily, and there's two for me at the moment. And bear in mind that this is for the people's portfolio. This is not for my individual portfolio, but for the people's portfolio, there's too many question marks over where they're going to be playing next season for Hadji, Dardai, and Till. You know, they could be playing in non-qualifying leagues again next year. Um, or not with Mets, but Till should be in League 1 next year. Same with Bayless, he could stay at Coventry, he could even move to the Championship. It's not impossible at this point. He could sign for a Premier League club and get loaned out. Um, Bayer, I don't see anything overly exciting about him at 66 pence. And Tonali, if he stays in Italy, that price he's at, then all you need to do is look at uh, Barella. The, the other Italian midfielder that's quite exciting now, when he was linked to a Chelsea, he was nice and high, now that Chelsea don't look like they've signed him, he's down at the £1 mark, so Tonali has a good, considerable bit of risk factor. So again, I'm kind of leaning on my own information, and when I seen this guy's name come up, I thought, shit, I better not pick him, because I don't think that would be too fun for the watchers, pick, me picking somebody that I like rather than... But um, when I look at all the evidence, guys, it's the, it is the best possible pick I think out of the list that we've got in front of us today okay so we're picking up 50 Jason Denier okay and also as well that's our first defender that we've had come in we've had midfielder midfielder striker and now we've got a defender in um so this is the people's portfolio guys as it's sitting right now I hope you've enjoyed the video today guys I did have to put a bit of a late plea out for names for this episode so please guys for next week get the names down nice and early the episode has been on a little bit longer but we've had some good information to outline and to discuss so thanks for spending the time with me on the video please leave your suggestion for next week's video in the comment section below if you're new around here and you've liked everything you've heard and the kind of things we've discussed please like share subscribe retweet all that good stuff guys stay out of trouble and i'll catch you on the next one take care ta-ra